Yo, Headliner Nation, what is going on? Kyle back with the Fantasy Headliners. It is a beautiful Thursday, which means it is rankings day here at the Headliners. Quarterbacks and running backs have already dropped, and now it's time for my top 36 wide receivers and top 18 tight ends. So hit that like button for me. Subscribe to the channel if you are new here. And ladies and gentlemen, I told you all in the start and sit video that this would be one of the most important videos you watch all week long. And I stand by that. It's time to hop right into it. Let's go ahead and go with the wide receivers. Number one is going to be Tyreek Hill. I mean, the dude is balling out this season. He absolutely deserves to be all the way up here. Him and Jalen Waddle tight end one and two over the last couple of weeks here. Cooper Cup going up against Arizona. He's going to be number two. Why? Because uh, he's Cooper freaking Cup. Stephon Diggs at number three against his former team, the Minnesota Vikings. It's going to be a good game. Overall, I believe the biggest thing here is going to be Josh Allen's elbow. Does he end up playing? Doesn't he? We'll see what happens if we have to adjust a little bit we'll talk about that in our updates video so make sure you stay tuned for that as well because Stefan Diggs and Gabe Davis could end up falling down a little bit as well if Josh Allen doesn't end up playing AJ Brown on Monday night against Washington going to be a really good matchup for him Washington has trouble stopping big wide receivers well guess what AJ Brown is one of the uh He's one of the biggest guys on the field every single time. Justin Jefferson going up against Buffalo. Now, I could go a little bit lower with Justin Jefferson, and I thought about it, but, I mean, it's a talent thing for me. I mean, Justin Jefferson is an absolute beast. I want to keep him in here. The dude is, I mean, I feel like there's going to be a lot of people in the comments be like, against Buffalo, you got to go lower with him. And, and if there are other people, I would get it. But here's the thing. If you own Justin Jefferson, are you really sitting him because it's a tougher matchup? Probably not. Some boomer bust potential there. 100%. Could end up having 20, 25 points. Could end up having five points. So one of those things where it's unfortunate, tough matchup, but you're going to roll them out anyway. It doesn't matter. Devontae Adams against Indianapolis. It's going to be another tough matchup there as well. Not necessarily in love with it, but with the way these guys have been playing, wide receiver ones on their team, volume coming their way. We're going to keep rolling them out on a weekly basis. DeAndre Hopkins, kind of the same thing. Could end up being a tough matchup. Los Angeles Rams, they've allowed 250 or more passing yards in all but two of their games this season. Jalen Waddle at number eight against Cleveland. Again, him and Tyreek Hill absolutely deserve to be in the top 10 this week. And Waddle, honestly... If you were to tell me, Kyle, I'm going to put them all the way up at wide receiver three, I wouldn't argue against you anyway. Amon Ross St. Brown is going to be at number nine for Detroit going up against Chicago. That's a matchup where since they've made those trades and gotten rid of some of those players that they did have, Roquan Smith, Robert Quinn, a little bit more difficult to get after the quarterback, so hopefully Jared Goff has some time this week. Amari Cooper against Miami should end up being a big matchup for him as well. Not only playing against a really terrific offense right now, you know, they're going to put up some points. You're going to have to throw it, and it's also a good matchup, too. Chris Olave against Pittsburgh, really the only <laughs> healthy dominating wide receiver on that team right now. So we're going to go with Chris Olave at number 11 against Pittsburgh. Not a great performance last week. Should end up uh, bouncing back this week. DK Metcalf against Tampa Bay. Sunday morning at 9.30. Don't forget, they're over in Germany this week. Uh, going with him, I think he's a safe option this week against Tampa Bay. Juju Smith-Schuster's got a really nice ceiling going up against Jacksonville. This should be a good game, too. Kansas City, Jacksonville, both inside the top 10 of most points allowed to the position. Christian Kirk, again, same game. Could end up being a really good game for Christian Kirk as well. A lot of touchdown upside there. C.D. Lamb at number 15 going up against Green Bay. Green Bay, will he see Jair Alexander? That's kind the big thing for me. I would have them a little bit higher. They've lost Rashawn Gary, so they're losing a little bit of that pass rush there. I would go a little bit higher with him, but I don't know if Alexander is going to be on him the entire game or not. Really love Jerry Judy this week. Really do. I think this is a fantastic matchup. They're coming off of the bye. They should have had plenty of time to prep and get themselves ready. Judy this week against Tennessee should be a smash. In fact, 
I've smashed the over on prize picks for him. Debo Samuel, really this low of a ranking has to do with his health. How healthy is he right now? If he's 100%, he's higher for me. If he's not, then he'll drop lower. I'm trying to kind of cut the mid right now and say, hey, if he even is a little bit limited, this may be where we see him. Tyler Lockett against Tampa Bay, that big playability is still there. Geno Smith touchdowns, two touchdowns in all but two games this season. Brandon Ayuk against the Chargers, even with Christian McCaffrey added, I don't think it ex- I don't think it hurts Brandon Ayuk because he's the deep threat on this team. And having guys like McCaffrey and Kittle and Debo Samuel only opens up that deep passing game for Ayuk. DJ Moore at number 20, an awful performance last week. Obviously, that was more about PJ Walker. We are gonna just, you know, try to stay, you know, stay steady with him. We don't want to get too excited about two and three weeks ago, and we don't want to overreact to last week. Let's just find a common ground right now with DJ Moore. Let's not expect a whole lot, knowing that's a volatile offense but this is a great matchup against Atlanta. Mike Evans at number 21, Chris Godwin at number 22. I got both of these guys much lower this week. This is a very tough matchup against Seattle. That offense just hasn't looked great this year, but the targets are there. The target share is there, and there's more than enough targets for me to justify ranking them as low-end wide receiver twos. Joshua Palmer, number 23, uh, Keenan Allen. I mean, who knows when this guy will play again, right? Uh, Unfortunately, I've been dealing with that hammy injury all year long. But Josh Palmer going up against San Francisco, a little bit of boomer bust, but definitely an opportunity there for him. Alan Lazard against Dallas could see a lot of Trayvon Diggs really touchdown dependent for me. And that's why he's lower as well. Gabe Davis, I have dropped in my rankings just a little bit. Hearing more and more about Josh Allen's elbow, I'm a little bit more concerned about Gabe Davis this week. He's more along the lines of a wide receiver three for me now. Michael Pittman Jr. at number 26. I know a lot of people are not going to want to start him. I'm continuing to run him out there. His performance so far this season has been fantastic. He's still getting plenty of targets. And again, a lot of times people will be like, but they're not producing. Why would you play them? Because if you've got guys that are getting top 12 targets, you don't want to just throw them away because the opportunity is going to be there every single week, whereas you can't say that about a lot of guys later in the rankings. Mikul Hardman at number 28, he's really boomer bust, and actually, no, I got to drop back to 27 real quick because I skipped Cortland Sutton. Cortland Sutton's a little bit more boomer bust for me. Again, a great matchup going up against Tennessee, but my concern is just that, you know, Greg Dulcich has really started to break out. Do they get up on Tennessee, you know, early and then try to run a little bit more? You know, what happens? there in Denver. For me and Cortland Sutton, just going to bounce him back a little bit knowing that there might be touchdown and that's it this week. Michael Hardman now at number 28. He's scoring a whole lot of touchdowns. Got nine targets last week, which was great, but prior to that, was not seeing many targets this season. A little bit more of a gadget player for me right now where they're trying to utilize him in some different uh, some different routes in the run tree. Obviously, they're putting him in there in the backfield. He scored a couple rushing touchdowns, which in an offense like this is absolutely fine, but you also have have to know when you start guys like that, there's a really high ceiling and a really low floor. Devontae Smith at number 29, just concerned if they get out on Washington early, they're going to run the football a lot. Rondell Moore at number 30 mentioned it earlier. You know, the Los Angeles Rams, they've given up a lot of passing yards this season. Rondell Moore, the big play threat there. Robbie Anderson's not doing anything. We've got him as a start this week, though. George Pickens at number 31 going up against New Orleans. I like the potential for targets, just going a little bit lower on the ceiling. Zay Jones at number 32 against Kansas City. Should see plenty of targets. Even the ceiling is not high as what Christian Kirk is. If you're looking for a safe wide receiver three, it's probably Zay Jones. Donovan Peoples-Jones has at least 70 receiving yards in four of his last five games. Chase Claypool at number 34. I like his potential. If you look at what the Detroit Lions defense has done this year, they've struggled against big body possession type wide receivers. Chase Claypool has a great opportunity. Terrace Marshall could absolutely find the end zone this week. Going up against Atlanta, I like his opportunity to score. And Darnell Mooney's going to come in at number 36. I am putting him in here as a low-end wide receiver three because I think, again, what we see is a lot of Justin Fields maybe running the football a little bit more. We see some Chase Claypool, Cole Komet, and Darnell Mooney, if he doesn't score, he just doesn't end up hitting that upside for me. And that's why I'm going to list him down at number 36. Play him if you must. Opportunity is there, just a little bit lower ceiling. Players that are just missing the cut. 
Terry McLaurin, and in fact, Curtis Samuel is also missing the cut right now, but Terry McLaurin, these guys are just missing the cut. Don't love the matchup for them this week, so I am actually going to end up staying away from them just because I'm not too excited about trying to run either of those guys out there. Uh, Adam Thielen is another one where, with the addition of TJ Hawkinson, I think we're going to see a little bit less Adam Thielen. Obviously, a tougher matchup against Buffalo. I just think the ceiling's very low on him this week. Brandon Cooks. I've got people keep asking about Brandon Cooks. I don't know if the guy's even going to play this week. Dude is very upset right now. I don't know if we'll see him on the field again anytime soon for Houston. Drake London is a guy that is outside my top 36 that is a sit and really is a drop candidate for right now. I know people are going to be asking about him with him being on Thursday Night Football. I'm out on him. And while Rondell Robinson, either him or Darius Slayton, both of these guys not loving the matchup this week. Rondell Robinson is going to be the safest bet this week. Darius, you know, Darius Slayton could end up scoring a touchdown, but again, if he scores a touchdown, you're probably only still looking at about 10 points. Wondell Robinson, for me, could end up seeing anywhere from about seven to nine targets, but if he doesn't have a whole lot of upside with those targets, you're probably only looking at maybe in half PPR formats, about six or seven points. Now, let's move on to the tight end position and keep this train rolling. And number one, no surprise there, Travis Kelsey. George Kittle's going to be at number two. He was really coming on strong before the bye. We're throwing him in there. Dallas Goddard, one of the safest options at the position right now, coming off a huge game last week. Gets Washington this week. He's at number three. Zach Ertz, touchdowns and back-to-back games. If it is a tougher matchup for the wide receivers, hopefully we find Zach Ertz a little bit closer to the red zone. Greg Dulcich making a huge climb in my rankings all the way up to number five. I really like his opportunity this week against Tennessee. I think the I think the Broncos are going to come out. They're going to want to throw the football a little bit to get started. Really, hopefully, Russell Wilson is taking a little bit from that bye week. TJ Hawkinson against Buffalo. It is a tough week. Nine targets last week. I expect to see a decent amount of targets again. Pat Fryermuth. It is a tough matchup, so I am a little bit lower on him, but he is the main red zone weapon for this team. But can Pittsburgh even get to the red zone? Dalton Schultz at Green Bay is going to be a very safe option, even if the ceiling is not that high this week. Kate Otten going up against uh, Seattle could end up being a very good play there. The only reason I'm a little bit more concerned with Kate Otten is because he hasn't, he hasn't, Put himself above Mike Evans or Chris Godwin in terms of the uh, in terms of the totem pole of targets, and you still got Rashad White and Leonard Fournette who are getting some dump down passes when things are a little bit too hectic for Tom Brady. Evan Ingram at number ten, just bre- backing him off a little bit again, recognizing that there is a lot of volume, but the ceiling has been kind of lost just because he hasn't been scoring a whole lot. Cole Komet coming off two touchdowns last week, he's making his ascent into the top ten for me this week, and was a start. David Njoku at Miami, if he plays this. Week he's going to be a start, but we're going to have to continue to monitor that and see if he even gets in this week. Gerald Everett at number thirteen and Tyler Higby at number fourteen. These are two guys that people are concerned about right now. Haven't played well as of late, but especially for like Tyler Higby, great matchup this week. Great matchup this week is still seeing. Top six targets. That's right. He is still in the top six of most targets among tight ends on a per game basis. Kyle Pitts going up against Carolina at number 15. If you really got to start Kyle Pitts, best of luck. I don't. Taysom Hill at number 16. I mean, I don't know why anybody would want to start Taysom Hill right now, and I might do a video like next week to kind of break down why. We'll see what happens. I'm not interested in it. Dawson Knox going up against Minnesota. Really, for me, it's about finding the end zone. If he can find the end zone, he makes his day. If he can't find the end zone, that's where we have problems. And then Big Bobby Tunyon going up against Dallas. A lot of people beat up for Green Bay right now, so Big Bobby Tunyon is going to make his way into the top 18 as well. But ladies and gentlemen, There you go. There you have it. My top 36 wide receivers and top eight tight ends. Hopefully y'all have a great week. Hopefully y'all get a whole lot of dubs. That's right. We want as many wins as possible. A lot of comments right now. People are battling back. They're coming back right now, going up against a tough record to get started. And that's what we love to see. But I'm going to get out of here. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and comment down below. I'm going to get out of here. Peace out. Stay safe and healthy. And I'll catch everybody on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners.